Today, I'm going to share with you the easiest and fastest way to complete the Kyo Prico Heist as a solo player in GTA Online. In this guide, I will go over some important tips for each setup mission as well as every important detail for the finale. I will leave timestamps in the description down below if you want to skip to any part in particular, but with that being said, in order to access the heist, you'll first need to own a Kasaka submarine. Once you have it, you can then head over to the planning board and start up the heist for $100,000. From there, start up the gather intel mission, but first, there are two things I highly suggest using for every setup that will make these setups a lot faster and easier to complete. The first of which being the Sparrow helicopter, which is stored in the back of the submarine and makes these setup missions a lot faster. The other thing is to use the fast travel feature with the Kasaka submarine. To do so, head over to the control center, sit down, and from there, you're able to use a fast travel feature to take you to one of a few different locations. But with that out of the way, let's now get back into the Gather Intel mission where we're going to the island of Cayo Perico. Now this mission looks different depending on whether it's your first time playing through or whether you've already done the heist at least once. If it's your first time playing through, check out my beginner's guide linked in the description down below that will take you through your first time. But this guide is geared towards people who've done it already for the first time. So once you get to Cayo Perico and you're at the airfield, make sure to check out the two loot locations at the airfield since this is where we're going to be getting our secondary loot. So the first one is going to be at the hangar. Inside there's going to be one loot location on the bottom floor at the very back and then a secondary loot location on the top floor which you could get to by hopping onto this crate or this pallet here, hopping over the railing and checking it out there. Once you've checked out the loot there, then head over to the south side of the airstrip and in one of the shacks, there's going to be a secondary loot location. As a solo player, the loot you are looking for is coke because it does pay out the best. The second best though is grass and the third best is cash. Once you've scoped out the loot, then grab the motorcycle on the east end of the airstrip and take this exact route to get to the communications tower. Once you're at the tower, you're then going to have to find the signal box to hack. If there is no guard at the base of the tower, the signal box will be on the ground floor in one of two locations. But if there is a guard at the bottom of the communications tower, the signal box will be up on the tower. Once you've hacked the signal box and found your primary target, you can then session warp back to the Kasaka to make things faster, only if you've already scouted out the main dock and drainage tunnel. If you haven't, in order to scope out the main dock, head over to this section here on the island that is the main dock. All you have to do is take a picture and to send it to Pavel. And if you haven't scouted out the drainage tunnel, then you could take the dinghy from the main dock and drive over to the base of the compound. If you drive close enough to the cliff, the prompt will show up that you've scoped out the drainage tunnel. But once you've done those two, then you could head back to the Kasaka and we could get into the other setup missions. So once you're back at the Kasaka, make sure to fast travel and park your Kasaka at Vespucci Beach since this will be the best location for every setup mission that you do. And the first setup you're going to do will depend on whether your primary loot is in the safe or if it's going to be in the glass case. If it's in the safe, you're going to have the safe code set up. And for that one, all you have to do is go to the penthouse. Once you're there, you're going to have to search for the head of security and he will be in one of three locations. The first is a bedroom just to the right of when you enter the penthouse. The second is going to be that office or boardroom in the main part of the penthouse. And the third is going to be at the bar at the very back of the penthouse. Once you find them, you can then kill them, pick up the safe code and finish off the mission. If your primary target is in the glass case, you're then going to have the plasma cutter setup mission. And for this one, there's only two tips that I could give. The first is when you go to the first warehouse, it will ask you to take a picture of a planning board. All you have to do is take a picture of the warehouse as soon as you get in. You can then walk out and it will count as a picture being taken. The second thing is when you get to the next location with all the enemies, if you have the sparrow, you could then use the rockets on the sparrow to take them all out and then pick up the plasma cutter and bring it back to the Kasaka. But once you've done one of those two, the next setup mission to do is the fingerprint cloner setup. When you get to the first warehouse, you could use this pallet or this big box on the right hand side to take cover. There's going to be four security guards in there, take them all out and the laptop will always be at the very back of the warehouse. Then when you head over to the archive to find the fingerprint cloner, run to the very back of the warehouse and it will be on one of those desks there. That's all for that setup mission. The next setup mission to do is the cutting torch setup, which is unlocked once you've scouted out the drainage tunnel. So make sure you did that during the gather intel mission. But for this mission, you're gonna have to go to one of three construction sites. At the construction site, 
there will be a construction hat that you could put on. Doing so will allow you to walk through the security guard's cones of vision for a short period of time without being spotted. That way you could find the cutting torch easily and take off. The next setup mission to do is a weapons loadout and for this one I highly suggest going with the aggressor loadout but you could choose whichever one you like. If when you start up the mission you see Meriwether HQ in the bottom of your screen, load into a new invite only session because that's one you're going to want to skip every single time. The other three locations are going to be office buildings and for these I highly suggest going through the roof entrance so all you have to do is land your sparrow or your helicopter on top, enter through the roof as it's a lot easier and then you could take out all the guards once you're inside there in this exact order using a close quarter weapon like the assault shotgun to make things even faster. Once you've taken out the guards in that order, hack the laptop and grab the weapons, I then suggest exiting via the roof once again so that you could grab your helicopter and take off. And finally, the last setup mission to do is the approach vehicle setup. And for this one, you're going to want to choose the long fin. For the long fin setup, you're going to have to go to one of three police stations. And once you're there, if you have a phantom wedge, you could call it in through your interaction menu. But if not, there's going to be two locations where you could pick up a truck so that you could pick up the long fin. The location that only has one truck icon will have a phantom wedge, so I always suggest going there. There will be a few enemies to take out, but it will make the mission a lot easier. The other option is to go to the location with two truck icons. There, there won't be any enemies, but they won't be phantom wedges. But regardless of what truck cab you have or choose, once you have it, make sure to set this waypoint on your map. This is where you're going to be heading to drop off the long fin, but it's important to set it early because once you pick up the long fin, you will have the cops on you. Now to lose the cops quickly, all you have to do is once you are no longer in the cops vision and they are looking for you, jump out of the truck and blow yourself up. And once you respawn, you will have no cops on you. And then you can pick up the long fin and drive it to the location. But with that, that is it for all of these setups. Now it's time to get into the finale. To start up the finale, head over to the planning board, toggle over to finale, and then click the start button in the bottom right hand corner. Once you've done so, you can then choose all your options for the finale. And of course, the first thing to choose is the approach vehicle, which is the long fin. For the infiltration point, choose the main dock. For the compound entry point, choose the drainage tunnel. The escape point does not matter, so choose whichever one you have. For time of day, it's completely up to you, but I choose to do daytime to make it easier to see. And then the final thing is to add suppressors for your weapons. Once all those settings have been chosen, you can then start up the finale. So once the cutscene is over and you've entered at the main dock with the long fin, make a sharp left hand turn and head over to the airstrip. Once you get here, leave the long fin in the water. Make sure you don't leave it up on the beach. If you leave it on the beach, it will despawn. So leave it in the water and then run over towards the hangar where the loot is and take out the guard that's right in front of it. Make sure to take out this guard early and on the left hand side of the hangar because if you take him out closer to the right hand side of the hangar, he will be spotted later on. But once you've done that, you can then grab your loot from the two loot locations. Now, if you have loot in the shack on the south side of the airstrip, all you have to do to get there is climb up this wall here, climb up onto the roof, and then take out the security guard that's over on the porch. Once you've taken out the guard, then take out the camera in front of you and jump down to the shack. Before cutting the chains to the shack though, make sure to wait for the guard that's close to you to walk away. If he's too close and you cut open the chains, he will hear you and you will blow your cover. So wait for him to walk away, then open it up and take all your loot. From there, you could then head over to the hangar and take the loot on the main floor. If you have any loot on the top floor, all you have to do is grab the forklift, pick up the pallet that's on the other side of the hangar, raise it up all the way, and drive the forklift and the pallet into the wall. From there, you could hop up onto the back of the forklift, then up onto the pallet, and then over the fence onto the top floor. And from there, you could go and loot the secondary location. But once you've looted those three locations, you should have a full loot bag. So once you do, hop into the long fin and then drive over to the base of the compound so that we can enter through the drainage tunnel. Once you get to the base of the compound, hop out of the long fin, dive underwater, and equip your rebreathers, which will allow you to breathe longer underwater. Once you've done so, you could then use a cutting torch to cut through the drainage tunnel. All you have to do for this is go over the green parts three times each quickly. Once you're in the compound, take this exact route to get to the main office. First, go up these stairs here. Once you get to the top of the stairs, make a left and you're going to want to run through this little passageway. At the end of the passageway, make a left. You're going to run a little bit further and then make a right. Once you've made the right, you can then hop over the railings here and wait at this exact location for one of El Rubio's personal guards to look away. Once his guard has started heading in the other direction, you could then run up the stairs, run up to where that guard was, and you're now going to run along the wall of the office building until you get to this part of these stairs. Here, you're going to want to hide up against the wall and wait for the final personal guard to walk past you. Once he does, run behind him and run up into the main office. Once you get to the main office, you could then loot the office safe and finally do the fingerprint hack to get to the basement for your primary target. 
Now the fingerprint hack is fairly simple. All you have to do is match the fingerprint on the left with the fingerprint on the right. To do so, you're gonna have to cycle through the different parts of the fingerprint until it matches up. Once you're downstairs, you could then use a cutting torch to cut through the chains to get to the primary target area. And if you have a primary target in the glass case, you're gonna have to use the plasma cutter to get into the safe. All you have to do is hold it until it gets to overheating four times or four and a bit that will cut through and you could grab the primary target. If the primary target's in the safe, all you have to do is input the code and grab the loot. Once you have the loot, go back upstairs and then exit El Rubio's office. Head back down the stairs until you get to this point here. Once you're at this railing, you're then going to jump over it and get out of the compound. But there's something you have to wait for and that is for the guard that is right below you to look to the left. So this might take three seconds, this might take maybe 20 or 30 seconds because the guards walk around in shifts, but what you're gonna wanna wait for is this guard here to look left. As soon as the guard looks left, hop over the railing, take the rough landing, and then you're gonna wanna make a beeline for the exit of the compound. Once you're outside of the compound, run forward and there's going to be a guard in front of you with a motorcycle. Take out the guard, hop on the motorcycle, and then take this exact route to jump off the island. As you're going, you're going to want to pick up as much speed as possible, and right before you hop off the island, you're going to want to pop a little bit of a wheelie. Let yourself hang in the air for as long as possible, and once you're in the water, you're going to see three mines in front of you. Swim out to the furthest sea mine. To the right of it, there's going to be some fish bones or whale bones. If you swim over those bones, a cutscene will start and that's going to be the end of the finale. Using this route and method, you should be able to complete the finale in under 15 minutes, have no hacks failed, and have full loot bags, which will earn you the Elite Challenge bonus, which will be an additional 50k if you're doing this on normal mode, or $100,000 if you're doing it on hard mode. But with that being said, that is the end of the Kyo Prico Heist. I really hope this guide helped you out. If it did, please drop a like. If you are new, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.